hi! This is Caleb Jones, and this is the Alpha Male 2.0 Podcast. Lifestyle design for men, long-term masculine freedom, long-term masculine happiness, dating multiple women without cheating, location-dependent income, anti-aging, all the good stuff when you are a man. You want to be happy when you're a man. You want to live a long time when you're a man. You want to enjoy this party for as long as you can when you're a man. And we live in an era now in the collapsing Western world in the middle of this dark age where it's actually an amazing time to be an alpha male 2.0. And just so you know, I have another podcast that I also do once a week called the Sovereign CEO Podcast. And that is at calebjones.com slash podcast where I discuss more business topics, five flags, international topics. You are more than welcome to subscribe to that podcast as well. So we do both podcasts once a week. As many of you know, if you know my content, I became financially successful very quickly in life in my 20s. By the time I was 27, I was making a six-figure income, and that was in 1990s dollars when six figures was actually a lot of money. Today, $100,000 really isn't shit, but back, you know, in 1990, whenever this was, 1998, 99, that was a lot of money. And what I thought about recently was, why? Why is it that I was able to make this money when so many of my friends who are my age and motivated and smart didn't? Because I had a lot of buddies in high school who were just as smart as me, just as motivated as me, they want to make a lot of money, business-minded. Uh, it was Gen X. We are the last generation in the world who actually enjoyed our childhoods and enjoyed our adolescence. And we're kind of excited to get out in the world and you know build companies and things like that. And by the time I was making six figures, you know, a, a profitable businessman with my own company, I was a computer consultant back then, you know, wearing a suit and tie and, and driving a nice car and living pretty well. My buddies were all like interns at companies and making minimum wage and shit like that. And, and I was confused at the time. Like, well, God, you know, I had a friend named Bernie and he, he was really smart. I had a friend named Frank and he was really smart. Why? I had all these friends and they were really smart, motivated. And like, why didn't, why didn't they make the money that I made? That's just kind of strange. So I sat down and reverse engineered this because I wanted to give you the guys advice, especially you younger guys, what it is I did to make sure that I made a lot of money in my 20s very early in life. What was that one thing, that one magical thing? And the things I thought it was were not it. So I said, well, I started my own business. And a lot of these guys got jobs. And you know what? That's a factor, but that's not why. That isn't why. I'll tell you why in a second, but that's not it. Uh, Was it because I worked harder? No, these guys worked really hard. Some of them worked hard. Some of them didn't. A lot of these guys worked very, some of these guys worked harder than me. And I worked pretty fucking hard in my 20s. But some of these guys worked harder than me. When it comes to college and having a part-time job while you're going to college and then homework, and then you go to the corporate world and you bust your ass in 50, 60 hours a week, you're with the commute and everything. No, these guys worked really hard. Some started business, worked really hard. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Was it because they were smarter than me or I was smarter than them? Um, I was smarter than some of them. Some of them were morons, okay? Love them, but they're, some of them were dumbasses. But some of them were geniuses. Some of these guys had much higher IQs than me. They had college degrees. I didn't go to college. I ain't got one of them things, as Dan Kennedy used to say about having a college degree. I didn't, don't tell anybody this. This is a secret just between you and me. I didn't even graduate high school. I didn't drop out of high school. I was two credit short to graduating because I got too many Fs on my report card and they didn't give you credit for it. So I was able to go to the... Uh, High school graduation with all my buddies, they handed this little plaque and you open it up, this little like booklet, they open up and the diplomas in there. They just handed me the booklet and I opened up, there was no diploma. And the reason they did that is if you're only two credits short, they assumed that you would go to summer school that summer and make up the credits and get your diploma, which I never did. My mom was like furious with me. She was so angry. You're gonna be a loser because you have a high school diploma. Oh my God. And yeah, you'll be you'll be a bum on the street. And yeah, okay, whatever, mom. So these guys had all this education and all this knowledge and knowledge, knowledge, like Ty Lopez says. That wasn't it. What was the one thing that I, if I could pick one thing, it wasn't that I worked hard, it wasn't that I started a business, it wasn't that I was smarter, it wasn't that I thought outside the box, it wasn't that, you know, I niched, because I didn't niche back then. I didn't take any of the business advice I give you guys now about Alpha 2.0. I didn't niche, I was location dependent, I hired employees. I did everything wrong. 
So that wasn't it. I wasn't some kind of business genius. Today I'm pretty good. But back then I was just a young, dumb kid who had read some books written by Brian Tracy and I just did my best. Oh, that's another thing. Was I the only guy that listened to Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and Dan Kennedy? The not no. A lot of my friends, now a lot of my friends didn't, but a lot of my friends you know, were listening to the same shit. Uh, you know, the same self-help stuff, reading the same books, the same, you know, get rich books and business books, and but they didn't pull it off and I did. Now, some of these guys, to be fair, some of these guys made it later in life, like in their 40s. They started making a lot of money, but I was making that money in my 20s, late 20s. Why? What's the one thing? What's the one difference between me and all my friends and all those guys? And what's the one difference between me when I was in my 20s and most of you listening to this podcast who are in your 20s or maybe 30s right now? What's the one difference that made the difference in terms of me being successful as a younger man? Here it is. You ready for this? I had the balls in my 20s to tell my parents to fuck off. That's it. My parents and my friends. That's it. That is the one difference. Because if I was like most of my friends and most of you in my 20s, I would have done what my parents told me because that's what my friends did. My friends had parents just like I had parents who said, you need to go to college. You need to go, because if you don't go to college, you won't make as much money and you'll make more money if you go to college and you need to make this family proud and go to college. And all my friends, 90% of them said, okay, mama, and they went to college. And almost all my friends, once they got out of college four years later or six years later, I talked to them, they said, motherfucker, I spent four years in college getting a finance degree, I didn't learn shit. I wasted my time, now I owe this fucking money? Yeah, dumb shit, uh, that's, that's what I told you when we were 18 and I said I wasn't going to college, okay? So while I was in the corporate world building up my resume, building up actual marketable real world skills, they were in college doing homework about computer shit that was already out of date by the time they learned it. Learning from a bunch of professors that made $22,000 a year. Teach them how to be successful. How the fuck are you gonna be successful with a professor who makes $22,000 a year or whatever the fuck it was, okay? Then, then their mommy and daddies and their friends said, okay, now you need to go get a good job. Now that you have a good college degree, you need to go work for, you know, Goldman Sachs. You need to go work for Nike, okay? You gotta go work for Intel, go work for Microsoft and get a good job, okay? You need a good job because that's what a, that's what a successful person does in life. Get a good, not start your own business. None of these people had parents that said, start your own business. I didn't have that either. My parents told me the same fucking thing. You need to go to college, get a good job, find a nice girl, settle down, have 2.3 kids. Okay, and all these guys, and many of you, said, okay, mommy, okay, daddy, I'll do whatever I'm told, even though I'm a man in my 20s, I'm a fully-fledged adult, I'm not a kid anymore, but I'm gonna do exactly what you want, mommy, because, of course, my mother is the expert on life happiness. My mother, I'm not talking about my mom, I'm talking about, in general, the royal we. My mother is overweight and has been divorced and is pissed off all the time, so clearly, I need to listen to my mommy when it comes to success in life because she is the model of success. So if my mom says I better go to college, I better listen to her, because she knows what she's talking about. That's what most of my friends did. That's what pretty much all my friends did. Pretty much all of them. And that's what the hell of a lot of you are doing. You know what I did? <laughs> you know what I did when I was 18? And my mom said, you better go to college. You're gonna go to college now. We're gonna call some college recruiters. I said, no. Nope, not going to college. That looks, that looks like a bunch of crap. I, you know, I'm already in high school. I've, I spent the last 12 years of my life doing homework, learning stupid shit that I'm never gonna use, learning about trinomials. What am I gonna fucking learn trinomials? Learning about, you know, the number of cilia on a, on a paramecium. When the fuck am I gonna learn, use that in the real world? Okay, I, I spent the last 12 years of my life learning this bullshit. I'm done. I'm gonna go out in the real world, learn real skills, and make a fucking shitload of money. I'm not going to college. That's ridiculous. Moreover, I gotta pay for this shit. Now, if you're in Europe and some other countries, I realize college is free for you guys. In the United States, you gotta pay for it. You gotta borrow a bunch of money and fucking pay for it. I, say, I gotta pay money to do a bunch of homework for a bunch of bullshit skills I've never used in real life? Mom, are you fucking insane? No, I'm not doing that. And my mom was fucking furious. And I said, I don't care. I'm not doing it. And all my friends said, well, you know, I'm, I'm applying to Duke University. I'm applying to OSU. I'm gonna go to ASU. Where are you going, Caleb? I'm not going to college. They go, what? What? Like Borat, what? You're not going to college? Dude, what the fuck? Why aren't you going to college? You gotta go to college. Now, most of you go, oh shit, okay, friends. I better be like you. 
and be one of the crowd and make sure all my friends like me and be in the in group and make sure that none of my friends think bad about me and you know, I better follow exactly what my friends because my friends are fucking geniuses and they're all gonna be millionaires, right? No. So I said that to my friends. I said, no, I'm not. And I even said this. I said, you're an idiot. You're gonna go to college, you're an idiot. What the fuck are you doing in college? I'm gonna be making money, real money, by the time you leave college. I actually said that to one of my friends. And it was true. Uh, by the time my friends, after four years from age 18 to age, what would that be, 22, right? By the time I was 22 years old, I was making almost 50K a year in early 1990s dollars. And these motherfuckers were just getting out of school, getting their first bullshit minimum wage corporate job. In many cases, getting internships, they weren't paid anything. And some of these guys were like bewildered. How is Caleb making all this money? He didn't go to college. And the number one reason for all this was because they couldn't tell their parents to go fuck off. They couldn't tell their friends to go fuck themselves. And for some reason, I don't know why I had this ability, I did. I'm weird. Um, even when I was a kid, in like junior high, when I was in seventh, eighth grade, I would hang with a bunch of friends and they'd all smoke cigarettes. When we were like 12, 13 years old, back in the you know mid 80s, they'd all smoke cigarettes. And they'd go, Caleb, want a cigarette? I'd go, no, that's stupid. Why would I smoke a cigarette? You're an idiot. And But most kids couldn't do that. They say, oh, okay, they take a cigarette and they go, <laughs> and they cough, and then they start to smoke it and then they'd be addicted to cigarettes. And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. So for some reason, this peer pressure thing was not a part of my DNA. I don't know why that is. I have theories, but I don't know. I just have always been like this. And so there's many scenarios where I hung up people who did drugs, who got drunk. I've never been drunk in my entire life, who are smoking cigarettes. And I said, no, I don't care if you do it. You wanna be an idiot, sure, but I don't care, fine. You can smoke all you want. I'm not doing it. And same thing with my friends. If you, you guys are idiots, you wanna go to college. You wanna do it, go ahead. You wanna fuck up your 20s, go ahead. Go to college, you morons. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna go make money. <laughs> Why the fuck would you go to college? And today it's even worse, but I'm not gonna go into that. The topic here is not about college. It's about listening to your mommy and daddy, right? Here's another thing that men do. A lot of men have babies and or settle down because their mommies and daddies tell them, you need to settle down and have kids. You're my only child and I want grandkids. And a lot of these men, especially men from India and Asia, you guys, Go, okay, mommy, I better have a baby to impress my mommy. And they go have kids and they're fucking miserable having kids. Because they don't have the ability to say, mom, I love you. I'm sorry, go fuck yourself. I'm not doing that. Sorry. Love you, respect you, I'm not going to do it. Most of you guys in your 20s and early 30s, listening to my voice right now, do not have that ability. You don't have the ability to tell your mom to go fuck herself, shut up. I'll live my own life, thank you. Mom, I'm over the age of 18, that means I'm a legal adult. That means my life belongs to me and not you. You have your own life and you could do whatever you want and I will never tell you what to do, mom. But now this is my life. Your life belonged to me when I was under the age of 18. So from age zero to 17, you owned me and I had to do what you tell me. Yes, but now that I'm 18 in most countries, I'm a legal adult now and I can set my own destiny and do what I want, not do what you want. You just can't do that with your goddamn mom. And I say mom because most of you, it's your mom. Most of you guys, it's mommy. Mommy screaming at you to go to college, get a good job, settle down, have babies or whatever. And you're saying, okay, mommy. Now, a few of you, it's not mom. A few of you, it's grandma, right? Maybe you don't have a mom you raised by your grandma. Okay, a few of it's grandma. Okay, grandma. I'll do whatever you say, grandma. I wanna impress you, grandma. Some of you, it's dad. Some of you, is dad is saying, I was a dentist and my dad was a dentist, and my brother is a dentist, and you're gonna be a dentist. You go, okay, daddy, I'll do whatever you want, be miserable the rest of my life to impress my daddy, even though I'm, man and I'm a man who's 33 years old. Okay, father, no. With some of you, it's your friends, it's your social circle. They're all doing something. They're all going to college, or they're all getting jobs, or they're all doing whatever, and you know it's not a good idea, and they go, okay, okay, friends, I'll do whatever you want. I'll follow what you guys are doing and not what I wanna do and I'll be miserable because I wanna impress my friends. So I'll give you both scenarios where I told my parents to F off. I've, give you, I've had several of these scenarios. First of all is when, yes, when my mom said, you need to go to college. You need to go to college and, and you know that's just no discussion. I'm gonna call the college recruiters and so I said, no, I'm not going to college. Now what I did do, I did agree to talk to some college recruiters. There were two or three who came over to my house when I was like 17, 18 years old. My mom and dad were saying, my mom was all excited. 
My dad was neutral about it. He was an entrepreneur at that time, so he he understood a little better. And these college recruiters would come over. One guy came from DeVry University. I remember that. Came over from De DeVry University <laughs> back in like, you know, 1989. And he's like, well, Caleb, you know, you know, your parents tell me you're you're into computers and you're into you're into real estate. Now, that's great, you know? You go to college, get a good degree in computer science. <laughs> And you know, you, you get a, a degree in business and yeah, you could, you know, eventually you could make, you get a good job and you could make, you know, 52,000 a year someday. Wouldn't that be great? And I said, no, <laughs> that wouldn't be great. That would suck ass, sir. Uh, I want to make $100,000 a year. I want to do it in my 20s. Do you have a college program for that? And he's like, ha, ha, well, <laughs> this nervous laugh, right? Yeah. So that was, that didn't last very long. I think it happened twice. And my mom's just all pissed off. My dad's, you know, kind of rolling his eyes. It was hilarious. And so I didn't go to college. Uh, as many of you know, I went off to the corporate world. I worked for a large software company when I was 18 years old, worked there for a few years. I worked as a, after that, I worked as a junior consultant in a uh, IT consulting firm for a brief period of time. I worked for a large corporate bank, their corporate offices, and then briefly I worked for Nike, Nike Corporate, and then I went and started my own business full-time when I was 24 years old, and by the time I was 27, I was making a six-figure income in 1990s dollars. Okay, that was the path that I took in my 20s because I didn't go to college, and I didn't do what my parents told me to do. Here's how I told my dad to fuck off. My dad, when I was working in the corporate world, he kept warning me over and over again. I was telling him, you know, I, I, at this job, I'm only making whatever I was making, 32,000 a year, which was a lot back then, you know, for a 19 year old kid or whatever I was, 20 years old. I said, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I can make more money if I go to this company. I could probably make 42,000 over there. You work doing the same shit, the same job title. He's like, oh my God, don't do that. Don't quit your job. You can't quit your job because if you have a bunch of jobs on your resume, no one will hire you. If you have a bunch of jobs, you only work there one year at a time or year and a half, your resume will look like shit and nobody will hire you. You've got to stay there for at least five, six, seven years. Then you can look for another job. Now, what was he telling me? He was telling me old, outdated advice from the 1950s and 60s when he grew up. When he was growing up, yes, if you had job after job after job, your resume looked terrible. In the 90s, with the tech revolution, your resume looked great if you had a different job every year and you were raising your income every year and you were making progression. Employers loved that shit. So I said, no, go fuck yourself, dad. I'm gonna get another job. And I got another job and I started making more and more and more money. And literally, uh, several years after that, I had lunch with my dad. I showed him a PL or my tax return or something, whatever I was making. And he looks at what I was making as a man in my mid 20s. I forget how old I was. And he literally, he, he shakes his head. He looks at me and goes, I don't know how you're doing this. I don't know how you're making this much money. I don't get it. He literally said it. I, don't, I just don't get it. I don't get what you're doing. Yeah, you know why, dad? Because I didn't follow your advice. I love you, dad. I respect you, dad. I'm not going to do what you say because I'm not a fucking baby. I'm my own man. Thank you. Now, I've told these stories before as well. There was another scenario later when I was in my late 20s where uh, my dad, I was on the phone with my dad. This is many years ago because I'm 50 now, but I was on the phone with my dad. My dad back in the day was a mild alpha male 1.0. He had a really big temper. Uh, today he's a beta male because he's in his 80s. But back then when he still had his, his testosterone, he was a fiery guy and he was screaming at me on the phone. He was screaming at me, he was furious. So I remember I was in the car. I don't remember what we were talking about, it was too long ago. We were arguing about something. He was screaming at me, yelling at me. And I said something to the effect of, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of, hey, you can scream at your other children because I have, you know, he has six kids. I'm one of six, I have six. I said, you can scream at your other kids. You don't scream at me. I'm a man, you don't talk to me that way. You talk to me like that one more time, you're not gonna see me for a long time. Click, and I hung up on it. He never raised his voice at me ever again. And that was, what, 20 years ago? Never again, not once. He still raised his voice to his other kids, my brothers and sisters, still did it because they wouldn't stand up to him. They said, yes, daddy, okay, daddy, even though they're in their 30s, 40s, you know, what have you. Never raised his voice to me ever again. Most of you listening to this do not have the balls to say that to your dad if your dad's being inappropriate. Now there's a few of you who are the opposite extreme and you actually scream at your dad and punch your dad. You fuckers are insane. You're even worse off, you need to get therapy. Okay, that's also really bad. But most of you are scared to stand up to your dad because you wanna do whatever your dad says. Later in life, 
around 2009, after my divorce and I graduated into the alpha male 2.0 lifestyle, I went through a phase where I was dating a lot of women, dating a lot of you know 18 year old girls and things like that. And my mom was over at my house one day and she basically gave me this riot act about why are you dating all these girls? Why are you dating all these young girls? This is so inappropriate for a man your age. This is just ridiculous. You're a father. What the hell are you doing? She didn't say hell. What are you doing? You should settle down with a good woman who's your age and get married and you know have kids and blah, 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 all this traditional bullshit. I said, mom, I forget exactly what I said, but I said something to the effect of, mom, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything you're saying. I'm my own man. If you bring this up one more time, you're not gonna see me for Christmas this year. And I meant it. Both times, by the way, I meant it when I said it. You're not gonna see me for Christmas because that's the leverage you have of your parents. Hey, you're not gonna see me for a while because that's what your parents want. Your parents, both moms and dads, are like women. They want your attention. Okay, they want your time. And if you take that away, they freak out. And I said, you better not bring this up ever fucking again. I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. And she left my house and she never, ever brought it up ever again, okay? Because I know how to tell my mom to fuck off. Matter of fact, I did say fuck off to my mom. I said, fuck off. Mom, fuck off. I'm gonna do whatever I want. You don't like it, get out of my house. You're not gonna see me at Christmas, okay? Now that was after I was, that was in my 30s, I think. I'm really talking here about why I was successful in my 20s. But these are just illustrations. I have the ability that most of you young guys don't have of telling your mom, your dad, and your fucking friends to go fuck themselves and do what you want, that you know it is right, instead of doing what your parents want and being less successful, less happy, more in debt, and have less money. Because I exceeded all of my friends in my generation in all those areas. Happiness, woman life, business life, finances, how great a life I live, I exceeded all those things with all my friends who listened to their parents. And the one difference I had was that I told my parents to go fuck off and let, let me down a path of starting my own business, making a lot of money as a young man, non-monogamous lifestyle, living a great life. Very few of my friends who I went with in high school live a life anywhere as amazing as mine. Very few, very few. There's a few of them that live pretty good lives. Most of them don't because they couldn't tell their parents to fuck off. You have to to develop the skill. I know it's hard for some of you, especially you Asians and you Indians. I get it. I understand it's ingrained in your culture and you're brainwashed with this bullshit. I understand that. You've got to do whatever you can to get to the point where you can look your mom in the face, mom or dad or friends, most of you it's mom. So I'll say mom, but it could be dad or friends. Look your mom in the face and say, mom, I love you, I respect you, fuck off. I'm not gonna do anything you're telling me I don't give a shit, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, and if you give me any more shit about this, you're not gonna see me for a year or two. How dare I? I'm not kidding, mom. And then you click, hang up the phone, or you stand up and leave the house. It's a mini soft next, okay? And if you don't have the ability to do that, if you never gain the ability to do that, you will never be long-term happy. And I personally know men in their 40s, in their fucking 40s, not men are 22, in their 40s, who can't stand up to their goddamn parents. And they're fucking miserable. Talk about beta. My God, think this through. Get some fucking balls. Stand up to your parents. And if you can't, boy, I'm glad I'm not you. I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye.